Hello there, everyone, and welcome to episode 9 of us playing as the United States of America. I'm your host, Mr. Douglas Granite Lever, but the Chosen One's trial. The Chosen One's trial is never in doubt. Even if Granite had suspicions about the Enclave's experiments on the oil rig and at Navarro, too many members of the Enclave blamed the Chosen One for deaths of friends and family, and propaganda blamed the Chosen One for stopping the Enclave's medical assistance to Royals tribals. And so the Chosen One was found guilty of supporting slavers in the den, of killing miners in the Broken Hills, of smuggling liquor into Vault City, and of aiding cultists in San Francisco, and of course, of treason against the United States government. The only question was their fate. Firing squad? Or a show of compassion, life in solitary confinement? <sighs> we need, we definitely need more wars, but you know what? I'm going to go with that one. Um, the Center of Air Logistics. One of our larger air bases in Oklahoma. The base served as a major component for the Air Material Command, moving supplies and equipment out of the nearby Army depots, out west and eventually towards China. Chief among them was the Oklahoma City Air Logistics Center, which was the largest unit of Air Material Command pre-war. Post-war, the massive war supplies left the base of Pickett Skeleton as scavengers and prospectors were paid big by the nearby casinos for any weapons or material they could get out of the base. While it left little for us to use, it didn't mean the base's defenses were down and any feral ghouls were non-existent. This allowed the Air Force to rapidly get the base up and running again, given the Army wasn't required to clear it out first. Already the airfield was up and running, and the logistics center is being primed for use in an out in our eventual push east. From here, there should be no place our troops won't be supplied in the American schism. We may be at opposite ends of the American spectrum. With Enclave and the Brother are cut from the same cloth, that is the American flag. While many see the Brother as techno-fetishists, one cannot deny that they lived up to the values rooted in their origins with the United States Army. We've both come a long way since the Dark Ages of 2242, with the power rising and theirs falling, with much of the Brother spread out across desperate chapters with little in common with the original goals and organization and society name. Many in America are still bitter and resent the Brotherhood, but a growing number of them wish to return them to the American fold. They have nothing more than to avoid wasting American lives since they are the one of the few organizations capable of matching us in technology. You can join us or die. I wonder, did we actually have a hand in Mariposa? Uh, best not answer that one. Air Force Nuclear Power Weapons. Or Weapons Center. Aside from having a sizable Air Force component, Kirtland Air Force Base was home to the U.S. Air Force Nuclear Weapons Center, and Landis was sitting right on top of it. The idea of a nuclear-capable legion is not to keep anyone up at night, and if it wasn't for the backwards thinking on technology, we might have seen a legion nuking our own troops. We can all take that and take a collective breath of relief, knowing that even if Lanius didn't understand what he was sitting on, he wouldn't be able to figure it out how to use him. He'd just as likely blow himself up in the process. Our scientists and engineers are working their way through the base right now, and while we have found a few nuclear weapons sitting in the storage, their age and lack of repair make them highly volatile, and most are being dismantled for the time being as we take account of what we can and cannot use. Between this base and Hopeville, the United States is slowly regaining its status as a nuclear power. Let's hope we never have to unleash it. Yes, where Lanny's failed, we shall rise. And of course, we're doing America's we were nights. It's no secret that the future will be American. And the Brotherhood can either join us or walk away. In a rare act, the President has decided to parlay with the Brotherhood and bringing them back within America's fold. The new Sierra Madre Gala event. The President today headlined what is described as the event of the decade. For the first time since the bombs fell, the streets of the Sierra Nevada, or Sierra Madre Resort, were filled with music while lights and fireworks lit up the sky. The gates of the Sierra Madre, once thought to be a place of myth and legend, have officially reopened. The event itself was held within the casino its resort itself, having made up primarily the military forces responsible for clearing the resort, as well as construction, engineering, research, and archaeological teams who worked tirelessly to put the place back together. The festivities concluded with a brilliant firework display signaling to America that the resort is open for business once again, and for limited times offering resort passes at low numbers. While many within the event said the festivities were great following several weeks of work and effort, a few noted a strange figure walking among the crowd dressed in a pre brown pre-war suit that bore a striking resemblance to the resort's original builder, Frederick Sinclair. So far, pictures of the individual remain blurry at best. The Sierra Madre Anu has begun again. Ooh, look at that. Fantastic. Keep powering everything here. Sponsor, follow our expedition of the apocalypse. Why not? I don't think we need any more Army XP rocket ready. We've completed the work on the latest model of the Delta X, as well as training the crew necessary to pilot it. Our ship is ready to Bloomfield, and the USSA director is standing for the presidential order to begin loading procedures and count on to launch. Alright, let's do this. Rocket ready. Remove rocket ready. Repel Delta X. Huh. 25% chance of America among the stars. 5% chance you hear that? Oh god. As us, our astronauts are, our astronauts are reporting picking up strange noises through their headphones and audio systems. They're reporting a weird mix of music, barely discernible radio chatter, and a series of static interruptions as if someone is changing the tune. We can only assume that what they're picking up is the sound of the post-war world. Radio stations still on loop, long dead military outposts still standing out, sending out calls to those who would never come. Others might be post-war signals directed by others who are trying to make out an existence in whatever corner of the world the ember of civilization, mutant or otherwise, exists. They've been there for years, just no one was in the right place to listen. I do wonder what lies beyond our shores. Do we lose a lot of money? Oh god, that's bad. 
Oh well. The greatest power in the waste. The on the Brotherhood were the most powerful groups of the waste, but there are others who strive to protect life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm sure we can find a use for them. So... Also defeat the actual axis of evil. Broken Coast of Washington Brotherhood and the Legion. These three powers surrender and save the waste, and with the collapse of the new California Republic, the only the enclave are capable of protecting democracy. Time to show them that freedom is always worth fighting for. Absolutely. Nice. The reconcile their past. The loss of the brother ancestral citadel in Los Angeles scattered them to safe houses and far flung bunkers across the waste. As of right now, they are their lowest. So the president can exploit his own game. Uh, reaching out, several elements of the brother's remaining leadership agreed to meet the president on neutral grounds of the choosing, and with Granite getting only a few hours' notice. When the location was chosen, Granite boarded Marine One with a heavy escort and arrived shortly thereafter. Elder senior paladins, and what few head scribes remained, stood across an open wasteland from the president and his entourage. The meeting was watched over by suspicious knights and paladins from above. The president's terms were simple and quick. Swear fealty to the United States and the Constitution, congressional oversight, and its people, and the brother would have, would have lost his return, all crimes exonerated, and to continue Maxon's goal of protecting the wasteland from dangerous technology via the United States. The brother leaders stood among themselves, mewling over the president's offer. Hmm. We're about forgiveness. Um, let's save real quick, because if it's not something I'd like, we're not going to do it. Can I annex them? So we do that, the New American Brotherhood. The President smiled at the acceptance of the Brotherhood, despite their reservations of the enclave's past hostilities. Word had spread of their actions in New Reno and the restoration of California and abroad. Two centuries ago, Maxon, and what would be the Brotherhood of Steel, seceded from the United States, and now the Brotherhood returned to it and reinvigorated and anew. Uh, yet, as the President warmly thanked them for their decision, Granite couldn't help but feel the stare of unease and concern from some of the delegation. Or the uneasiness of the Knights watching them. He couldn't blame them, but his warm smile could assure them they had taken up the great step into the future alongside the rest of the modern post war world. After 200 years of wayward soldiers have returned. Promote the exchange of ideas. Welcome back into our fold. Well, Lost Hills may have been the birthplace since the epicenter of the Brotherhood of Steel, each. Uh, Chapter operated semi independently to a mixed bag of success. From the soaring accomplishments of the Midwest and Texas to the sad stories of the Mojave and Maxon chapters. Then, of course, there are horrors that came out of the Seattle with the Washington Brother. Much more. The fact that these chapters are free to interpret their own laws, codex, and values to whim puts a danger on American citizens, both within our border and without. By a special act of Congress, the American Brotherhood will work to reunite the chapters and bring them in line with the views of both the American people and the American Brotherhood. Protect Americans, and by extent humanity, from the dangers of technology, but also not lose sight of the value of life as well. What awaits us, we shall see. Although the modern Brotherhood presents itself as aloof and indifferent to the concerns of the Wastes, in the past it has supported Wastelanders in containing riders, raiders, immune threats, and outbreaks of the plague. By working with the Brotherhood Liberals, we can encourage ties with the reunited States. Our Band of Brothers Thanks to the new, uh, now old, Brotherhood Elders, the Brotherhood was fractured in many disparate chapters across the Wasteland. We should reach out to them and bring them back, hopefully, peacefully. The old scribes, Brotherhood Knights, Brotherhood Hardliners Flee, and Rob becomes a home of the unit of Brotherhood Volunteers at, at Victorium. Oh. The Lost Tales becomes the owner. Oh god, we actually lose Lost Tales, huh? Becomes a puppet, which we can just, just demolish them eventually. So we'll do that, but you never know what we can accomplish here. Guardians of Cheyenne Mountain. The primary tent of the nearby Cheyenne Mountain complex, better known as No No Rad, pre war, the base served around the clock sentinels for any foe, be it American, Canadian, or Chinese, who would try to bring No Rad offline. It was even said that the base in the surrounding area was more secure than Washington, D.C. Then the Great War happened, and the base was hit several times by Chinese nukes and left to rot. Given the importance of the region, the Air Force wasted no time restoring the old base, while there still remains much work to be done in NORAD. The base itself has been brought online for support as well as general defense and the cooperation with nearby Fort Carson. A large sphere remains the Brotherhood, enclave separatists, or techno technophobe terrorists who wish to use the treasure of the Vault Zero to do their own gains. Good, let's get this place online. Flying high over the Altus. Set around training our, for our air transports and aerial refueling, the scope of our operations slowly stretched from coast to coast in Oklahoma, which was prepared, spared much of the nuclear bombs of the Great War. The base had derelict with scavengers picking over for advanced components or everything else they could find. After some heavy engineering work to remove the damage and destroy transports off the runway, the Air Force is reporting that the base is back to full operational capacity, or as operational as we can get in a post-war or post-nuclear war environment. Fly goes fly. Rocket ready. Cool. All right, let's do this. Let's see what happens. Among the stars, the launch went off without a hitch. Once reaching the uh, stable orbit, the astronauts proceeded uh, to form a number of scientific tests that was, while it was a boon to the USSA and the growing space community is of little use to the government. Thankfully, the crew is reporting nothing out of the ordinary and are sitting, settling in for their trip around the globe. Once the orbit is complete, they'll land the rocket at a pre-designated landing zone where they will be recovered by a military vertebrate and return to civilization in short order. A successful mission. Let's see what happens here. 
Negotiations, huh? We're building the Rockies, huh? Let's see what we can do. So, uh, baggers, everyone becomes a commonwealth. The people of the baggers have suffered too long from slavers, troll raids, and raiders. They remember the flag of the fathers and have taken the first steps to rejoin the United States. There's a lot of money. Are we out of money? Yeah, we're out of money. We just have to have money. Yeah, just have pay people to join us. What could go wrong with that? Implants too? Sure. Better enable stuff? Oh, absolutely. Legion marches, but they don't. Need more money. Look at all the rebellion at Whispers of Hope. All American badass, huh? Brothers hardliners flee, of course. Why would they? <clears throat> Despite our best diplomatic efforts, there have been many in the Brotherhood who have seen that there were nothing more than genocidal maniacs hell bent on their destruction. When a representative alerted us that all of them had disappeared the night before, where were they taken to raiding local countrysides instead? Or our raider picked up an unidentified airship heading east towards what was on St. Louis. In an act of good faith, we didn't scramble fighters and sent them well wishes on their voyage, saying that we would assist them if they went down and sent an emergency beacon. Our creature sent off was not responded to. They don't come back to bite us, right? Safe travels. Watch out for the storms. Dexclave. Ooh, Operation Leviathan, yes. All stops on the line. The Order. Disunity in Texas. Well, since we're here, we should probably focus on the North. Uh, oh, so after Alto Bypass, when completed, all well, unlocked decisions aid foes of the Legion. The Legion's ramshackle state was built over the last few decades through ruthless expansion, but Kaiser's help, heart had time to give it a lasting government, and won't if we succeed. Operation Leviathan. The Pacific Northwest is a monster, spoken in hushed tones and seen as a horrifying frontier by many. However, we are the enclave, and there is nothing that, now that we can't overcome. Of Gorgons, Trolls, and Bones. Uh, the weird ways of Oregon have only multiplied since the Great War. Inside the Trolls of the Warren, there are also the Bone Raids, the Gorgons, the Marlick Tribes. Some of the more outlandish tales claim of elderish horrors. However, we need to pass by if we're going to claim America, of course. Was this reuniting the American Brotherhood? Sundown of the Mojave, Bay of the Mojave chapter, Colorado expedition. Because right now, we ah, they're back. Bastion of the American Brotherhood. Technically, our core: Benjamin Barstow, Underground Hangers, those and Evil Tin Cans, Steel Pride, Spear Alloys, Brotherhood Fortifications, Old World Focuses, Lost Hills Logistics, Shattered State, huh? Interesting. Everything's on fire. Allied membership, huh? Wasteland Militias, that's pretty good. Help from the United States, you betcha. Fun in the Army, Officers, Conscription Corps, that's cool. Saving the Human Race, Stabilizing Government, Rebuilding the Corps, Research Agreement, ooh, Gip Armor, Federalization, You're taking the Capital, this is the Governor's Speech. We're going to start working on coring them. Good. Because these guys are still killing each other, and I want to make sure we actually do well here. So don't you guys over here. We have a lot of whispers of hope and whatnot, don't we? It's getting to the point where it doesn't make sense. Operational Leviathan, though. The lands of the Cascade Commonwealth have not fared well in the war. Perhaps there's a lack of farmland, the abundance of dark forests, and the hostility of the cities. Out of all of them, Oregon fared the worst, of course. Most of the cities are overrun by pirates, cannibals, and a tribe that worships Marlux. Only well, a few pockets of civilization exist here and there, then, of course, there's the Troll Warren, the largest collection of shoot mutants this side of the Colorado. Whether or not they carry the master dream is unknown, but if they turn south, it will be a hell of a fight. Then there is, of course, Washington as well. Uh, much of the state was overrun by Washington Brotherhood, a non -con codex compliant chapter led by the enigmatic immortal who is as brutal and ruthless as they come. Not to see out of the moral rule. Uh, ruins chapter. Like a small empire is willing to strike alliances with the Maw and the broken coast that suits his needs. If anyone's guess who's more of a threat, the war or the mortal. Secure Seattle at all costs. Oh, where did that one? Secure Seattle, so. Free Cascadia, huh? There's no reason America should suffer under a ghoul, brother ghoul Sumius, nor will they. Fix the broken coast. The funny thing about piracy is that it's only viable until a strong central government restores order. Let me demonstrate. Um, the greatest power in the way. Sansion and Brother were the most powerful groups, of course. 
the what is this? Support cause paradisons. Abraham Lincoln once said that America was the cause of all nations. This may not be true, but the dream or dream of freedom certainly aligns with the goals of the resistance to the Washington Brotherhood. Raise the banner high. The word of the reunited states has spread far and wide from the emerald shores of the Pacific to the misty banks of the Atlantic. Tired Americans raise the banner high and rejoice. Eventually the masters of the wasteland. To, oh, Manifest Destiny, yes please, with the defeat of the Legion. The New California Republic and the Washington Brotherhood. It is time to remind everyone that America's original motto was join or die. I love that motto. Uh, Tandy's legacy, despite her resentment, the NCR was trying to emulate the spirit of the United States. However, it rapidly devolved into corruption and racketeering and warmongering that threatened to topple it as it ventured east. Yeah. And eventually the New Reno address of New Reno has been transformed from a vice and gang-ridden city to a vice and politician-ridden city. The center of the government for the reform enclave here on the west coast. On the steps of the Western White House, Grant will address the future of the American Wasteland. Echoes of something horrigan. <coughs> with the addition of the super immune auxiliaries, a few of the more enterprising and scientists within the military have brought forth a proposal to re-implement the finest instrument of warfare ever designed, Frank Horrigan. While now it's impossible for us to completely replicate the technology, mostly because the secret's laid directly with your old rival Anderson, we can make them the next best thing, an armored chassis combined with a simple AI construct based off the Mr. Gutsy models worn by super mutants and sent into combat. These hulking behemoths would be unrivaled on the battlefield. Raw mutated power, American technological superiority, and utmost loyalty ensured by the AI directing them on the battlefield. It's an ambitious plan, but one we might think work. That thing was a monster, no. I'll run some tests. Why not? As you can see, I've already set up uh, our invasion plan of uh, uh, the Badland Bugaroos. So we'll get there eventually. Um, oh my god, this lag is insane. It's almost like ready to crash or something. Jesus. That ain't very good. Uh, are we losing war support here? Oh, popularity of the elite. That's fine. That's good. Okay. Cool. Fort Sill. As evidenced by the rusting hulks, the artillery pieces around Fort Sill. The installation was home to the U.S. Army Field School. In the post war era, the tribal bands, <clears throat> uh, war bands, settled the militia and raider parties. One rarely finds a professional standing armies, and none have even proven capable of fielding artillery in large scale like we can. Even then, very few would understand the finer points of artillery, such as ranging, deflection, and charge, but even in the fast-paced infantry and power armor dominated warfare that defines post war American uh, wastes, artillery is still very vital. Aside that, our demo teams can use the training in the vast quantities of artillery uh, locked up, let alone the other manufacturing capabilities. Can allow us field artillery shows for the further use as we push east. The expedition to Sierra Madre. Sierra Madre is believed to have nothing more than a Mojave legend. Fable City of Gold, where our fortune can be found. Good thing we have a map. We can strip it now. Ooh, look at this. Nice. And for when we get there. For treatment, nice. Keep draining them. 37 is quite a bit. That's alright with me. Reams, nice. Anything else we can do here? Oh, assault rifles, nice. Dribble plasma rifles, yes. Better? Nope. Uh, King of Swing at the tops. So the tops of scenes advertising. Probably the pre war singer Dean Domino has made a return to the New Vegas uh, for the first time in over two hundred years. The famous pre war lounge singer was previously rescued during a government sponsored cleanup operation in the mythical Sierra Madre after recovering in a hospital near the resort. Dane has returned to New Vegas and is ready to make a comeback to start him once again. However, he's providing a few performances with the new songs and recordings he has developed while sitting in the Sierra Madre. Something's gotta give. Almost a thousand factories. My god. Ah, I've already become a federal commonwealth. Pressure Cypress economically. With the old aid of the father's influence, the Cypress are adopting crop rotation, literacy, and the basics of civilization. Now they can persuade their elite to sell some of the land they don't need to hungry settlers from California and Nevada and create favorable economic deals. Everyone will benefit from this. Bagger Joint, United States. Oh, yeah. Makes them easy. Makes it nice and easy. New Reno address. The New Reno Address. Today, the President gave an address from the steps of the Western White House to a large crowd of onlookers among the restored city of New Reno. We see before you in the city that we were about is a taste of what the enclave will do to the rest of the country, the United States. We'll live again in through endeavors like Reno Initiative that we will turn this blighted waste into a thriving paradise where survival is not the word of the day but echoes of a bygone era. 
The Great War might have knocked America on its knees, but this country will stand proudly once again, of course. What has been called the New Reno Dress in the local press has renewed a sense of pride and patriotism, patriotism in the citizens of New Reno, who no longer see themselves as the pawns of the gang lords, but as citizens of a great country they only read in the history books. Critics, of course, point out the president seems to hide ulterior motives and that the vague promises were too open to be truly kept. So far, these predictions have yet to be made manifest. Recordings of the speech are available on the holotape in local stores. God bless America. Ooh. Max out legitimacy, basically. More war sport, finally. Political power, excess legitimacy will be converted to base stability. Fantastic. We got all that in the end. Anyways, nice. All the way in Oklahoma. Oh my gosh. So very far away. Some areas, I don't know, understand why sometimes you can install police forces and sometimes you cannot. It's weird. Is there an easy way? Can we just like auto assign that to like a button? That would be so much easier and smoother and nicer, in all honesty. It'd be very nice. Restoring uh, these guys would be nice. Oh, I read this way before if you want to read about this, please go ahead. Cool. I want to go and kill them, but I just probably can't. Army supplies, of course. Uh, we could do this one. Probably last time. America Among the Stars, or is that one? Successful mission. Fair the Mojave chapter, Whispers of Hope. Oh, now we're out of a crap ton of money. And where are we at with this one? Still pretty far away from it, so, which sucks. Well, we have 100% legitimacy, which is fantastic. Yeah, I just don't want. This is not bad, but war support, air superiority. Ah, oh, fine, why not? Oh, God. Lots of artillery. Because why not? Use a little more army XP as well. Bunker kid, huh? Dry reams, good. Brigs, so we probably won't even use. Gutter holes, we probably won't be ready to use either. Maxed out political power. Sponsor a railway, sure. More army XP, weekly stability. Do we need that? No. Retail machinery, no. Um, we can do this one just because. There we go. Horrigan Core. After baiting and corralling a large group of renegade super mutants into a small canyon, we send in our own augmented super mutants. Um, despite fighting their own, our super mutants charged in, unflinching, and some even shouting pro America slogans as they did. Their mounted armored chassis shrugged off rounds and took blows that would knock down its regular soldier and power armor. In but a few minutes, the battle was over, and only a few of our own were killed in combat. When our Frank Corrigan leveled with success, we were never going to replicate him directly. As a bonus, we tested self destruct mechanisms on their armor and the deceased super mutants. So if everyone does go to Berserk, our officers can safely remove them from combat at minimal risk to human life. About FEV, about time FEV bore success. Organ core. Super mutant attack, speed. That'd be really cool. Organ power armor. So we need to release him on the Legion. That's really cool. Fifty-eight. I mean, we have enclave power armor. Which you don't, I'm not really going to change it up. Advanced power armor, of course. Actually, armor's better. Ten break, ten defense, almost nineteen breakthrough. Ninety percent hardness. Oh, five and a half max speed. Ninety percent reliability. Thirteen and a half production cost. Way more production cost, but we put it down here anyways because we can't find out. Can we replace our infantry with that? Does that require 
Oh, crew got turned into ghouls. We found something. I'm serious. The navigation error to them passed too long into one of the Earth's Van Allen belts. Within a matter of seconds, they were blasted with enough radiation to kill a man four times over instead. Sweet release of death, however, they were ghoulified. Skin flaked off, hair fell out, and they have the Raspy Boys school are known for. The USSA director has terminated the mission. Decontaminated teams are standing by to retrieve the Delta X. That leaves the crew. I'm sure to hear that. We found something. And the Uncle set out to reclaim America. We used advanced power armor at Mark 1. The most advanced system at the time, however. The designs were thought lost when the road went down. We've been forced to use an X01 prototype advanced power armor. While some of our officers and at least continue to wear the Mark 1 models, repair proved hard and replacement place been impossible. That all ends today. Our network excavation teams managed to restore much of Navarro's old data network after it was locked and seemingly purged when the brother tried to data mine for technology. While much of what was recovered were old report logs, we recovered the partial schematics of the advanced power armor Mark 2 or Mark 1. Our engineers can work with this data, completely recreate what we once had. Take some time, but soon we'll have the best power armor on this, this side of the Forbidden Zone. Just want Sergeant Doran to catch you out of it. Nice. Good, good, good. Oh, are the Badlands with us? Oh my gosh. They are puppet orders, aren't they? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. My bad. Happy August 1st, everybody. Oh, we annexed him. Look at that. We just straight up annexed him. So easy. Um, in the new world. Much has changed since the bombs fell 200 years ago. What lies behind our boards and what's more, what are we going to do with it all? So you guys ally to us? Yeah, they are. Screw it. I, I mean, it'd be easier to just pair drop, but at this point, I want to kind of see us like demolish them like this. Nice. Lots of holes in total. And let's see, let's see the new one. It wasn't just the United States that ceased to exist on the fateful October morning in 2077. The whole world was engulfed in nuclear flame and fallout that saw the total destruction of lives, cultures, and civilizations. Even as the missiles and bombs impacted DC and Beijing, the entire world felt the blast wave of the Great War and just as many didn't survive. Now, however, with the return of the Enclave and the restoration of the old world, old world's greatest superpower, Granite finds himself at a crossroads. Will he endeavor to restore the old world similar uh, to what it once was, fixing the damage done to it in a nuclear exchange and bringing them back from the ashes alongside America equals and eight allies? Or will he pursue the Enclave's dream of the United States becoming the world's policeman, taking over the world bit by bit, but only until the one flag is flying in the stars and stripes? Well, ambitions such as Europe, Asia, or Africa might be far off in the future. For now, he can focus on the North American continent and help shape the destiny of the new world. We can repair the continent. I want Pax Americana personally, but you know, whatever. It's more fun. Nice. Department of Education, civilian education. Schools are not barracks. American education will focus on rebuilding the economy and restoring a pre war prosperity. Fund the colleges of the followers. Well, the followers have built some of the wasteland's greatest center of learning. Let's revive the Homestead Act and ground land resources and build schools across America. Dropping harpoons? Nice. It's fine. By the apostles, huh? So, encourage the first, uh, Murtaugh reformers, forgers, join us. It'd be nice. We annex Klamath, sleepers, join us. 
the fossils rejoin us too. No, we need more money. Crud. Crud daddies. Oh. Black Claw's looking thick. Teach for America, the establishment of a public education system, or school system, even if not, for a great while, well, extended beyond the cities, presents us with an opportunity. We can persuade the Wayside's youth that pre-war America is the best country on Earth, a land of new Coca-Cola fountains, prosperity, and greatness. Or we can be honest and say it was full of mostly good people who made some real mistakes, like the ones who led to the nuclear wasteland we inhabit today. Given these options, it's hard to see any reason not to whitewash the past bed. Who's going to tell them otherwise? It looks about the time we conquered the moon. America's past is glorified in history books. It gives people something to be rally behind. After all, isn't there anyone alive who remembers that it was, was, was it really like? Tell kids about the mistakes that led to the Great War. He does not learn from history, he's doing repeat it, and I don't think we'll get lucky a second time. Yeah, this makes more sense for us to do here. So about FEV. Of all pre-war ladies that plague the wasteland, none has been more apparent than FEV. What started as an earnest attempt to protect Americans from Chinese biological attacks became a catalyst for nearly every major event in the post-war America. From the Master's Army, the literal plague that hit Utah, FEV was brought in by nothing but pain and destruction to the wastes, however. Our efforts in Dugway Proving Ground have borne some fruit. We're working off our old research to omnicide, uh, <clears throat> cure the waste of radioactive maladies. Or maladies. Uh, some of us work the deadly step into targeting certain waste and horrors from Cazadoras to death clause. Of course, anything involving requires presidential approval, and the science team is waiting our response. Um, oh, we can do some good. Are you kidding me? No. Eh, we can do some good. Because once we go to war with the troll war, we're going to go to war with these guys too at the same time. Because I'm tired of waiting. Oh my god, resistance is so freaking high. Uh. Send it over the Mojave chapter, huh? The Mojave chapter was the victim of the elder's own genius. Sent out to uncover the secrets of the new Vegas in the Mojave. The Mojave chapter found themselves at the epicenter of the giants, which they were unprepared for. Too busy staring in the trees to see to see the forest close in on him. Elder Elijah led his chapter to doom. Gambling everything on Helios 1 when that failed, what would have been? Uh, the Helios Brotherhood made its end before the NCR Legion and the U.S. Army. However, the tenacious chapter survived long before the, for the members of the American Brotherhood to welcome them back with their own open arms, become another vital part of the American push pushed forward. They begin again in the Mojave. The, their paladins, knights, scraps, and lances will join us. Fantastic. Colorado Expedition. A mission to save the treasures of the old world, the Maxon Expedition could have been a Colorado Brotherhood, if not for the Alliance and the Legion. Should be the Maxon Expedition, we thank for putting the fear of the power armor into the Legion, and reminding Colorado that the old world was not something so easily forgotten. Nice. Oh, I gotta do that too. Um, all stops on the line. Our old quarantine system in Nebraska festers with an old world horror. We don't mean the purists. Coming soon. Cool. Texas way. Fate of the Provisional Republic of Texas. Oh, quite possibly a successful brother chapter of the side of the Mississippi River and south of it. The Texas Brotherhood scored an early victory of Addis' army, standing tall with Texas wasteland and forming the bedrock of the Republic of Texas alongside Lone Star and Austin. With an annexation of Texas back into the United States, the Texas Brotherhood will be celebrated and remembered to the highest ideals and actions of the American Brotherhood. And a fine legacy left by the Brotherhood hero, Ember, Elder Rhombus. Always ready, always there. Oh, shnikes! We just straight up annexed Texas! Holy crap! Oh my god! That is insane! God dang! Good lord, look at all the stuff we have to build to get some more cores around here. Is there a Mexico section we can form? We can cool if we could. Well, there's areas we cannot do. Or core, really, yet. Which really sucks. I mean, we'll be fine in the end. I'm not worried about it at all. We're 400,000 manpower, anyways. There you go. Cool. Go straight on in. Further store, Shepard Air Force Base, a center for air training ex excellence, excellence. Once even serving pilots of the defunct NATO before Europe descended into anarchy. Battle barges, huh? Purpose tankers. Store, further store, Daz Air Force Base. It was the home of the Global Strike Command, a center for bomber operations that we used ensuring the communist terrorists in Mexico and China sympathized in the Caribbean stayed uh, down. Uh, stayed far away from America's shores. That's good. Go 
God, I don't want to deal with all the resistance. That's insanely bad. That is insanely, insanely bad. All stops on the line. Sins of our past. We can pretend there was nothing wrong with us in the past. So many hordes of the way sent from the corporate greed to the military run amok as in the case to know ourselves helped in our downfall. We need more money. Further store Hort Hood. Hort Fort Hood? Fort Hood. Holy Grail of Texas. Uh, the Center of American Power Armor Production, which was highly coveted by the powers of Texas, especially the Brotherhood. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Faster, faster, faster. Because they will go to war with us, and it's going to be a giant fight to have against them. Oh, crap. Good, get the Carolins, it's good. Save them. Nice. We've lost 5 versus 14,000, that's pretty good. The good old days. Ask any enclave old town will speak of the good old days of America where everything was perfect and nothing was wrong. Ask any old ghoul until you saw a brutal military dictatorship and unhinged corporate greed. Oppression, automation, food riots, and human rights, this abuse. I could pretend all day that America was about this house on a hill, but once you look inside, you may never want to look back. America was as much as the fault of the communists for its own downfall, and the jingoistic leaders on the rig were too blind to see that. 170 years of smelling their own farts made them even think the worst refuse smelled like a rose. If any lesson of the great wars to be taught, it's one of America. Sure, it's back, but for how long? How long to another China? How long to another new weapon leads to another great war? How will America learn the mistakes of this past when most of those who saw it unfold are now dead? We are for the people, by the people. Founding principles should not pro put profit above morals. Never forget, liberty and freedom are paramount. We did nothing wrong. I'll go with that one. Everything's bigger in Texas. Texas represents the very spirit of the American cowboy, so in common with pre war history, let's rekindle that fire. Look at this. This unity in Texas. Ever since the death of Addis, we watched the remains of his army crumble and now Texas is a super mutant playground. We must be ready. Texclave. Texas is menaced by another Brotherhood chapter. Santa Ana, super mutants, and the Legion. Uh, perhaps we can rebuild local support to stand up for democracy. Until then, we can use the lands of Texas Arms Association to jump off as a jumping off point. Santa Heaven's Gate. From the mountains of Utah come a crusade of faith and steam. The leader says they have God's blessing. Doesn't he know? God bless the Enclave and no one else. Oppose the Mexican Titans. Before the Great War, America often intervened to protect the people of Mexico. Now that they're threatened by rogue AIs and drug cartels, perhaps we should do so again, or Northern Dominion. In 2072, we formally annexed Canada, thank God. However, that lasted all five years before the Great War. Maybe we should focus on some efforts there as well. We did with Mexico, and we didn't own them. So, very good. Joshua Graham enlists. Although New Canaan has fallen, some of the leaders have survived and made their way to America. Among the most noteworthy is Joshua Graham, one of the Legion's founders. Graham seeks vengeance against the Legion for treatment of the Mormons, and will carry the fire of the Holy Spirit against her enemies until he stands before his lords for judgment. Killing our enemies is just a chore like any other. So, um, as you can see right now, we have set up a lot of our templates, templates, divisions, to take out our enemies. Um, and we just want to go to war with them at this point. The good old Rio Pact. Uh, got the cipher down for the apostles and the timber line. Fantastic force like normal. And our furbish tankers, because why not? Hmm. Unlimited power, huh? Very nice. Anything else we can really do here? Do we really care about? Not too much. But square rig sails, and scavengers turn a triumphant. Hey, more captain comes, nice. Outriggers, tugboat hulls, of course, and conquer the no jewel and crime. Someone uh, asked from the last video, uh, wasn't there some additional content for this Fallout mod that adds a capital wasteland and other warlord states in the eastern United States? Is there? A, I guess there might have been. I mean, I'm gonna probably do this again too, but still. Texas represents the very spirit of the American Cowboys, so common with pre-war history. Let's kill that fire. Testing results. Rook began in earnest in one of the abandoned vaults of California. Within the sealed atrium, the modified FAV strain was released on a chamber containing rat roaches, feral dogs, feral ghouls, and blowflies. The strain was to target blowflies with the ghouls standing as human surrogates. This modified FAV has no effect on the dogs, rat roaches, or ghouls, with the blowflies dying off rather quickly. Continuing the test provided the same results as elevated scientists, proving that FAV can be used to clear out some of the worst creatures of the post-war war world. More testing is underway, of course, ensuring that virus doesn't mutate as well as taking it to, other target, to target other creatures, or lead to something entirely that will have no hope of combating. Well, nowhere near ready for a release of such. 
It represents a major breakthrough in FEV research. Well, some of it did come. Good, and... Oh, we can do that one right now. How much money do we got? Seven, seven, seven. Hey, look at some lucky numbers, eh? Um, uh, out of this one, of course. War movie would be nice. Prepare the next turbine, of course. Uh, further restore our Red River Army Depot. Another pre-war U.S. Army Depot. It seems to have become a vital for continued march out east. Flat center of Oklahoma. Not for even the resource wars. Uh, Shepard Air Force Base was home to a flight training, uh, not just in the United States, but even our allies and what was NATO. Sadly, Europe grew soft and communism dissolved NATO after a president swept, criticized them for not doing enough, and then evolved into wars over petty resources. Now we're not sure what's going on over there. What we do know is that the base bucks under our command. We have a new training center for the Air Force pilots, many of whom are starting to chafe under being forced to attend a Navy flight school at Fallon NAS. President Swift was a true American. Cool. <clears throat> I above Lone Star. About a component of strategic air command southern efforts, the bombs of I above Mexico, the Gulf and communist heck hole of Cuba, ensure that any who challenge America in its own backyard would meet a swift and destructive end. Post war. The base will continue to serve this as we push to control the Caribbean for the pirates, commons, and whatever else goes down there that we haven't been able to uh, see developed yet. Ah, just go for the next power armor. Yeehaw. Cool. Hmm, Enclave Sigma, huh? Further store up Fort Polk. Well, as I say, a major U.S. Army training center is desolate and haunted. Well, that's according to the superstitions. Superstitious locals surrounding the base. Um, the menace from Washington. The Washington Brother. Fresh from his conquest of the Troll War and others, lust for more. More researchers as slaves. Uh, more technology, and with the new California so bitterly divided, it's, it's extending its claws towards the United States. Where are they even getting their power and armor? Good question. That's not good, because these guys wanted to go to war with us, so... Uh, so basically, I want to go to war with them, then. Society, Bayou Motors, Heaven's Gate, Timberline, yes, yes. Defenders of the Alamo. Right, despite breaking off from the Texan Brotherhood, <clears throat> to continue the original mission, the Alamo chapter found itself in the crosshairs by Santa Ana and a twist of irony three hundred years in the making. Defending the Alamo against a despotic AI's robotic hordes, the Alamo chapter will be toasted and remembered for four years to come for the bravery and determination against all odds. The paladins and scribes and lunches join the United States. Oh! Well, shnikes. <laughs> that was easy. One of the easiest times ever taken out the Alamo chapter. I love it. And there you go. Everything's bigger in Texas. Texas Commonwealth said enough. Not even nuclear war could keep Texas down, or could the brother of the Rio Republic of Supermans or Santa Ana's robots. Texas Commonwealth represent the territories of its namesake as well as Oklahoma and Arkansas. The Texas Commonwealth is the first true deviation from the pre-war Commonwealth system in that Oklahoma has been integrated into the Texas Commonwealth for administrative purposes, having been formally placed in the mid Great Midwest Commonwealth. The lands of Texas, despite being civilized, are still rumored to be dangerous and caution is advised to stay within caravans and move with authorized U.S. Army convoys. Play the song. 100% legitimacy. Nice. Someone says, excellent work, Mr. Mokalover. I hope you can restore Canada and Mexico to the pre-war states as well. Well, we'll see. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Restore Navarro's defenses. Navarro's automated defenses uh, were destroyed in the NCR siege and further wrecked when the BOS and NCR started shooting at each other. It's going to take a lot to bring them back to operational status. Yeah. Yeah. How are we doing here? Still building ourselves up, huh? Doing it te the Texas way. All right, we're out of Texas. Puns for now. Of course, the Lone Star State comes. Full of super mutants, brother, and roller derby raiders. Let's just get to work. Canadian pirates join the Brotherhood. To the north of Washington lies a broken coast where pirates bludgeon their prey to death Canadi Canada's sacred clubs. The fearsome hockey sticks. We hope they serve as a nuisance to the brother and tie down their flanks, but now they form a blood pact with the brother to seize California, which can offer far more loot and slaves in the Northwest. To war with the Russian brother break out, they may try to harass their coasts and supply lines, of course. The United States Navy wet its teeth fighting pirates 500 years ago. Perhaps it's time to pick up the old habits. Let them know they've not begun yet to fight us. Operation Devoclitz, Operation Domino. Um, Dante. Hades. White Claws. White Claws, huh? Uh... 
To access the menace by another Brotherhood chapter, let Santa Ana Super Mutants in the Legion. Perhaps we can build a local support of Santa for democracy until then we can use the lens of the Texas Arms Association as a jumping off point. Honestly, that would probably be the best. Ooh, I forgot what they have open holes here, too. Mm, anything else around here? Anything else around here? Ah, uh, sure, why not? That is his remains. Texas, of course, brings his own case to Super Mutants, originally set forth to revive the Master's goal. The death of Addis at the hands of the nascent Texas Brotherhood refraction Super Mutants. Under the 33 of Addis' former lieutenants, in Austin, Keats tried to envision the ideas of the Master as the true unity. Well, Shale clung to the remnants of the past. Juggernaut. Juggernaut's just a rabid dog. Of course, many will have to be put down. Some from Texas speak that many are good people that just want to live peacefully. The ideas of Austin are the ideas of America. This is available because we chose to integrate Super Mutants. And aggressing. Get them all down. We have no time for mutants. I like that idea. Of course, we read this one earlier, too. Chain Choir. Something what can bruise in Oklahoma. This creature is so powerful, they can break the minds of men and mutants. And the remains of Oklahoma lay like one of the most disturbing discoveries we've ever made. We're unsure if it had a hand in it, if we had a hand in it, or if it was some twisted corruption of man, science, and greed. A pre war experiment dedicated to the psionic potential of FEV. A pre war experiment dedicated to the uh, every aspect of this freak show has soldiers on edge, and what's worse are the mindless thralls that were once Commonwealth or Common Way centers. A few security logs show they once did battle the remnant of Oklahoma National Guard using these mindless thralls as expendable infantry. Now that we're in control, it's best to let this one die. And the very notion of breaking someone's free will is enough to send shivers down one's spine. Imagine if a purist or some supremacist gets hold of these recordings, and they manage to pull it off, the backlash alone could destroy everything the United States has worked so hard for up until this point. Everything regarding this cursed facility would be destroyed and buried, covering over. Covered over by the saying that Oklahoma Guard killed mutants from a West Tech FEV facility. Leave no trace. Hey, one of the songs labeled Wake Me Up. Someone says study the recordings. This be useful in future updates. So can we go to war with them now? We're just going to go straight to war. I probably should have done this earlier, but whatever. I've got plenty of fighters now. That's fantastic. Loads of fighters. Because the Washington Brotherhood is coming for us, so we gotta get ready for him. Oh, and immediately just start killing each other. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh. Whoa, how can they pierce destroy us? Are they piercing us or something? What's going on here? Ten. I mean, we're Jean, we have Jean fighters. Jean fighters? Patrols. Why wow, are they able to hurt us so badly? Oh, we can't pierce them. I'm sure they can pierce us, though, right? Holy crap. I'm just trying, but it's good. Got tons of things here now. Which one are worth making? I can, I can never remember. Patrol boats. Uncle F. Rigots. Tugboats. Yeah. Tugboats and refurbished tankers, huh? Tugboats and refurbished tankers. Uncle F. Carry, of course. Tugboats. Combat bars. Nice. Uh, 779, which is not bad. They've lost over 16,000 so far, which is fantastic, but still. There's those guys too now. Good. Down here, Mexico's way. Remember the Alamo by the Army Depot at Red River. Our pre war ancestors really did good putting up these depots access across the United States in the case of an invasion. In this case, it was total nuclear annihilation, and the Enclave's clawing back everything we've ever had. 
Road Raiders is expected to be the perfect supply and refueling point for military units pushing west and is expected to pay, play a big part in supplying the fight against Midwest. Repair and overhaul facilities. The vast munition storage bunker remains relatively intact, though many will need to be refurbished after years of being torn apart by the scavengers. Another step in a push east. To us, 400 years. Our surveyors excel sifting through the wreckage of what could be the millions of robots piled up outside the Alamo chapter's former fortress. What happened here is a tragedy on an immeasurable scale. Many wanted to see the memorial erected to the brave defenders of the Brotherhood, who gave their lives to defend against the Mexican Titan. Remember the Alamo. Clean it up. Uh, I've got to go remember the Alamo. Mysterious Texclave. For many years, the idea of an enclave enigmatic Texas branch is nothing more than a myth. Well, many uh, ranking officials are refusing to answer any questions. Others, it's a hidden treasure trove of technology and wonder akin to the lost city of Atlanta. Uh, George, or Georgia, or El Dorado. In recent weeks, there has been numerous complaints from commanders of troops going on leaving around El Paso in search for this enigmatic base, with a few even being injured as a result. Dark Brother marches. Oh, crap. Uh, okay. Good luck you won't find it. It'll be found when it's ready. Brother store Sam, Fort Sam Houston. Brother had overlooked the fort due to the lack of weapons on the base, unknowingly passing it over for a medical gold mine. Um, ah. Oklahoma's last patrol. The last patrol. <laughs> the last patrol, huh? Rumors of American ghosts reached even to California, of course, when we found Major General Harrison and his forces still clinging to the American dream. We didn't believe it. Well, by now, any lineage to the actual units are long gone. The remnants of Oklahoma National Guard still walk the wastes. Many of them will enter the United States in the enclave of this endeavor. Well, many hasn't allowed to allow them in, especially seeing as they're being led by an ear feral ghoul. Prowls and skill cannot be overlooked. General Harrison, welcome aboard. Last patrol joins the enclave as is their leader. Maintain the units to let the patrols end. Ooh, that'd be kind of nice. But we're, we welcome everybody here, apparently. Whether we like it or not. Um, plus, Mexican Titans. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Hey, we got him. I hope it doesn't crash the game. Please don't crash the game. Whispers of hope. Oh, cool. War crimes. During a just regular deliberate America, American forces engage in what some might call war crimes against the civilian population. Pictures of the incident have been released in paper newspapers across the United States and have been greeted with condemnation by the New World Party. Punch troops, sadly, the free press with critical offensive wars against settlers and tribals. What else is on? Available because we have entertainment broadcasts. Times like these, all we need are distractions. Well, we lose 5% here, 4%. I'm going to lose 4% than 5%. So, some of the comments include not even the cloud or ghost people stop America from achieving its goals. God bless the uncle, God bless America. So. Um, overall, I think we're going to end it there. We're looking pretty good. Hopefully, there's a way we can just, like, just release Mexico. But I guess we'll see next time. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And see you in the next one in which we are going to continue annexing and peacefully annexing more people. And uh, eventually we'll go to war with the Washington Brotherhood. And just hopefully pair drop into the lands to completely destroy them. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.